Twitter. Uh, there's a lot of faces that some I haven't seen for a long time, but I'm very happy to see you. Um, some new faces that maybe I haven't seen before, but either way, happy Sabbath. Welcome, whether you're online or whether you're here with us in person, it's really great to have you here today. Uh, today, I think it's a time when it's still kind of weird. We're still getting used to coming back to church, and sometimes we can lose focus of why we come to church. So I'm going to ask you, what are some of the reasons that we come to church? Fellowship, fellowship all right. What does fellowship mean? We say that word a lot. What is fellowship? Socialize, interact. I heard something over here. But to be together with our brethren. You know, we brought up, and thank you, Blarina, you mentioned that we're part of this church family. And we really are. And it's a blessing to be able to come and see. You know, we text each other during the week. But to be able to, like, see you in person, there's a blessing there. I'm very happy to see you, for those of you that I haven't seen you for a long time. It's great to have you with us. And today I want to bring to you Another great thing that we can do together, all right? What's in our sights? What's in our sights? When we come here to church, what are we trying to get out? Is it the fellowship side? What about anyone else? Does anyone else, what's something else you enjoy about church besides the fellowship, the family side? Is there some other reason why you might come to church? The spiritual. Okay, cool. How do you feel your spirituality is enhanced by coming to church? I love that. And Rookie, that's exactly what I want to talk about today. Studying the Word of God with other family members. You know, I love when I have a Bible study, and I've had Bible studies with different people here. I love that every time, you know, percussion, I started reading through Revelation this week, and it's always a blessing to be able to read things together. You know, it's a blessing. We always learn more because two heads are better than one, right? We can speak and say, Holy Spirit, where do you want to guide us from your Word? Now, for those of you that have your Bibles, if you want to turn to Proverbs, there's some really beautiful verses here that I want to share with you. Proverbs, and we're going to be reading from chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4, and we're going to read verse 20 through to 22. Proverbs 4, verse 20 to 22. It says there, My son, be attentive to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Let them not escape from your sight. Keep them within your heart, for they are life to those who find them and healing to all their flesh. So here we see, what are, what are these verses telling us? What are we to do with the words here in the Bible? There's a few different things. What's the very first thing it says? Incline your... I can't hear you, what? Incline your ear, right? We need to pay attention. We need to focus. You know, like in Revelation, we were reading this week. You know, is it enough to just read the words of the book? No. We need to really hear it and take it in and keep it. You know, it goes together. And here, you know, you can hear this father speaking to his child. You know, my child, I love you. I don't want you to just see it, you know, just look through the Bible or look through my words or whatever. When you were little... Can you think of a time when your parents, maybe your mum or your dad, were speaking to you and maybe you weren't really paying attention? I see some of the parents just being like, that's you, you weren't paying attention. <laughs> There's that temptation sometimes. When we're children, you know, sometimes we don't always pay as much attention to our parents or maybe those of you that have kids, I don't know, Peter, sometimes Jasper, you know, you tell him to do something but he's too busy playing or doing something else. Oh, okay, well, that's good. You have... Blessed son there. I remember when I was little, I would often get in trouble for maybe not paying attention the way that I should. But with God, how are we? It doesn't matter how old you are, all right? Whether you're four years old or 90-something, you're still God's little child. And he wants us to pay attention to his words. Like it says there, incline, be attentive, all right? Incline your ear to his sayings. Let them not escape from your sights. And... What do you guys think that means? So we need to be attentive, okay? We need to pay attention. We need to incline our ear. What do you think it means? Let it not leave your sight. Absorb it, right? 
there's something that happens with God's word. We know that in Hebrews chapter 4, it tells us that God's word is so powerful. It's like a double-edged sword. It can come and just break between everything. There's so much error and confusion in the world. But God wants to come and break through down the middle. He wants to show us the truth. You know, sometimes there's different extremes over here or over here, but God wants us to be standing in the middle, in the truth. We need to see things the way that he wants us to see it. And that's only as we are attentive, as we pay attention to his word and as we incline our ears to what he wants to say. Besides that, so it's in our ears. We have to pay attention. It'll be in our ears. It'll be in our eyes. Where's the next place that it tells us that God's words should be? In our heart. Right? In our heart. I don't know if we have... Are there any teachers here today? You used to be. All right. I don't know if you have this, but sometimes when you try to connect with people, traditionally it would be all very cognitive. It's all very cerebral. It's like, all right, we need to put this information in your head, all in your head. But with information, what is the process? Where does it go to? From information, then we have knowledge. Then from knowledge, we go on to wisdom. So what's the difference between information, knowledge, and wisdom? Exercising it, that's right. All right, look, just as an example, we have a whole bunch of record magazines at the front. Feel free to grab one. They have a lot of great things in there. That's information. It's just sitting there. But until we pick it up and read it, it it's meaningless, all right? It's there. It's great information. But until I read it, you know, it's not going to go beyond that. If we want to go beyond that and if we want to have wisdom, we really need to apply apply it in our lives. The recipes that are there might be great recipes, but if I don't go home and cook it, it's not going to benefit anyone. And it's the same with God's words. When it's in our hearts and not just, okay, it's in my ear, it came in, then, oh, it's in my eyes. I see that maybe I should be generous or I see that maybe I should be kind. You know, it, it might be there. We see, oh, that person has a need. I need to help them. Until it's in my heart, I won't actually act out and do what the word of God is telling me to. Now, the last verse. Why? Why do we want it to come in our ears, be in our eyes, and be in our hearts so that we can act it out? What will happen as we take God's word, as we pay attention, we focus on it, in the ear, in our eyes, in the way that we see life, and in our hearts and acting it? What will happen? Verse 22 has the answer, right? For they are life to those who find them and healing to all their flesh. This is what God is wanting to do for us. One of my favorite writers has this quote, and it's in a book called Lift Him Up, all right, page 262. There is but little benefit derived from a hasty reading of the scriptures. Do any of you identify with that? Oh, I, I want to read the Bible. So, you know, it's my morning devotion time. So, all right, and I'll read. But I'm in a rush because I've got the, all these appointments to get to. So I'll just quickly read. You just read and you don't even remember what you just read. But there is but little benefit derived from a hasty reading of the scriptures. One may read the Bible through and yet fail to see its beauty or to comprehend its deep and hidden meaning. One passage... All right, how many passages? A whole chapter? No, just one passage. One passage studied until its significance is clear to the mind and its relation to the plan of salvation is evident, is of more value than the perusal of many chapters. This is a challenge to me. You know, sometimes we're in a rush. When's the last time you picked up your Bible, properly sat down and made some time to really go deep into God's word. You know, I'm blessed because I get to do it with different people on an almost daily basis. But how often do we just make time on our own or in a group to get together and really go deep into God's word so that we can have his life that he wants to give to us, that will go beyond just in the ear and, okay, oh, we see, oh, I probably should do this, but it's actually in our heart so that we act it out. This quote goes on. Keep your Bible with you. Read it. Fix the text in your memory. Even while you are walking the streets, which I know some of you do, you may read a passage and meditate upon it, thus fixing it in the mind and in the heart. To the Hebrew, there's not much difference between the mind and the heart. 
God here is calling us to study his word more deeply. But why do you think that is? Why do you think he's, so many places in the Bible, he's telling us about the Bible and about the word and, you know, it's this dividing and study to show yourself approved unto God, you know? All these verses where it talks about the Bible. Why do you think that, yeah, the, the Bible authors focus so much on, hey, you should read your Bible. Why do you think that they kept saying, hey, read the Bible, read the Bible? I want to put it to you that the answer is very simple. It's because God wants to tell us something beyond our understanding. You know, when we look around in our world, we see so many different things. And so often, is what the world says the same as what God says? It's not. So often, they're worlds apart. And it's really hard. You know, if one person says something to you, you might be like, oh, no, that's not right. But when almost everyone seems to be telling you, oh, hey, this is, this is the right way. But then the Bible says, oh, no, that's not right. That's not okay. It can be difficult to stand on God's word. It can be difficult to focus on what he wants us to focus on. But the benefits, as we saw, are life. For those of you that have your Bibles, can you turn, please, to Isaiah chapter 55? Isaiah 55, and we're going to start reading from verse 6. Isaiah 55 and verse 6. It says the following. Isaiah 55 and verse 6. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord that he may have compassion on him and to our God. Why? Why do we return to God? You know, if, if you don't have it in front of you, you might think, oh, return to God before punishment comes and he destroys you, or, you know, return to God before some calamity befalls you. But it says here, let him return to the Lord that he may have compassion on him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. This is why God wants us to come to him. No, not so that he can be like, see, I told you, you made a mistake. I told you that you shouldn't have done that. Our God is waiting for us to come to him that he may pardon us, that he may show compassion to us. Sometimes in our worldly mind, we might not think that way, but this is God. He says here, he goes on in verse 8, and this is a key thing. This is God speaking. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are my ways your ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there, but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. God's ways are not our ways. And when we want to know, how many difficult choices do you make at work, in your family life, you know, when your neighbours, okay, Leonardo, you're probably watching online, you know, he was blessed to have an interaction with our neighbour yesterday. Um, you know, we, we need wisdom, we need discernment to know how to interact with the people around us. God is telling us, our ways, our thoughts, the things that we think are different to his ways. And the Bible, his words, that's the way that he wants to tell us, hey, this is the way. Walk in it. When we're confused, I'm having this problem with this family member, or I don't know how to deal with my boss or this person who works, who I work with, my colleague. The Bible has advice for us in all the different areas of life. But I have a really important and real question for each of you. What do you do when the Bible, it just seems like it doesn't apply. You know, you just, you read it and it just, it doesn't speak to your soul. It's like, okay, I've read it and I'm trying to get it in here, but it's not like, it's not going inside my heart. It's just, I've tried to read the Bible, but it just, it doesn't work for me. I'm, I don't feel anything. I don't feel any connection with the Bible. I just, I've tried, but I don't feel, I just don't feel it. 
Have we been there? I can see a lot of heads nodding, and I have to as well, because sometimes, let's be honest, sometimes we'll read the Bible and we'll be like, thank you, God, this is exactly speaking to me. This is the message that I needed to hear. And then other times we'll read it, and it might even be for quite a while. You know, we want to connect, but we might not have this feeling like it's making a difference in our life. God, I'm reading the Bible, but I'm not feeling moved. I'm not feeling touched. And I don't know, I just... Is there a purpose to reading the Bible when I'm not feeling these emotions? Like I'm just feeling nothing. I think the answer is here where we just read, isn't it? Sometimes we read God's word and we just think, but God, I'm still struggling in my life. I'm still struggling with addiction. I'm still struggling with sin. I'm still struggling with pride. I'm still struggling with temptation, whatever it is. God, my temper, you know, I'm so human. You know, I know sometimes I should be maybe more gentle or whatever it is. Is reading the Bible really making a difference? Friends, this is where faith comes in. Faith is believing God's word, that he will do what he says he will do. And we just read in Isaiah 55, here in verse 11. I'm going to read it again. This is what God says, all right, whether you have a feeling or not. This is what God's word is doing when we read it. So shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty. It will not return to me void. But it will accomplish that which I purpose. And well, it says here, shall succeed. All right, It will succeed in the thing for which I sent it. We don't have to wait to feel this amazing, you know, it's like we're levitating off the ground, you know. That's not what the Christian experience is about. Yes, we have these great times when we're feeling God's presence and we, we're blessed you know, to know that we have that connection with him. But whether I feel it or not, is God with me? He's always with us. His word is always making a difference. Even if we feel like, I don't know, I'm not feeling it. His word is there. Why? Because we walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by faith, even when it feels, you know, uncomfortable. Sorry, the tithe. Do you guys know that song, when there's pain in the giving? You know, you, you want to give offering or you're paying your tithe, right? You're, you're returning your tithe to God. And maybe there's that pain there because you don't know how you're going to pay for your electricity bill or something. And by the way, if anyone's in that situation, speak to us and we want to help you out however we can. But sometimes... We walk by faith, even when we don't know how the blessing is going to come. The big decisions in your life that you're making, when we go by God's word, he will bless us. For those of you that have your Bibles, can you please turn? If you turn to Proverbs 4, I want to read verse 18. And this verse is really important, Proverbs 4, verse 18, because we read the verses that come after it, all right? We need to listen to God's word. We need to bring it in our ears, in our eyes, in our hearts, and our life will be better. But we all need to acknowledge that there's a time and a place. God is working in us to show us more of his truth. Proverbs 4 and verse 18 says the following. But the path of the righteous is like the light of dawn, which shines brighter and brighter until the full day. We're all waiting for that full day. Jesus is the son of righteousness. He's the one that we're waiting for. He's the one that is going to come and illumine everything. But for all of us, when we start in our spiritual journey, you know, that path of the righteous that we want to walk along, we start with maybe a little bit of knowledge, a little bit of light. It's like when the sun comes up in the morning, you don't wake up and it's like full day. What would happen to you if you woke up and it's like suddenly the noonday sun is in your eyes immediately? You'll shield your eyes. You'll cover. Yeah, exactly. Because it's, it's too much. God wants to work with us bit by bit. He wants to help us incline our ears a little bit more. You know, maybe as we incline, it'll start being more in our sights. Friends, what's in our sights? When we look around... Do we see God's word? Do we think about how the Bible relates to our daily lives? Because it does. 
Or is it just this abstract theory? Even if it is, God wants us to grow in applying more and more his words to our lives. But the path of the righteous, it grows and grows. We grow in a better understanding of the Bible, walking more and more by faith. Where are you in your spiritual journey right now? Are you walking by faith or are you waiting to have these big, you know, supernatural kind of experiences with God? I hope that we're all learning more and more to walk by faith in God's word, keeping that connection with him. And yes, sometimes, definitely, I hope that we are feeling that alive power, knowing that the Holy Spirit is with us because God is good and he, he is with us through the Holy Spirit. But he doesn't want us to just stay there. Joyce Myers, speaking of the verse that we were talking about before, being attentive, inclining your ear, she says, this verse means to pay attention to, to give some time to something. To attend to the word of God is a lot more than just reading. It's meditating on it. How many of you have friends or you yourselves have like a meditation app or they're into meditation or something like that. It's so common these days. Everyone's like, oh, if you need to de-stress, if you need to calm down, oh, download this app. It'll help you meditate. It'll help you, like, calm your mind. Now, I saw some, someone shake. Yeah, yoga sessions, all that stuff. Now, here's the thing. Is meditation a good thing or a bad thing? What's that? It's good? Exactly. Exactly. Meditation is a good thing if we focus on what we should be focusing on. Do you know the Bible talks about meditation so many times, but it's not talking about meditating, you know, and just emptying your mind of everything. It's actually the opposite. Biblical meditation, when the Bible talks about meditation, it's actually filling your mind with what? With the Word of God. We're to fill our minds. We're to meditate on the Word of God. Because I don't know about you, but if I try to empty my mind... At best, you'll be thinking of nothing. <laughs> if I fill my mind with God's word, there's so many promises in there, great and precious promises that can bring peace. First Peter, all right, if you go to First Peter chapter 5 and verse 7, there's so many promises, and I know that we could be here looking at them forever, but First Peter chapter 5 and verse 7 and 8. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7 and 8 says the following, Cast all your cares upon him because he cares for you. Be sober-minded, be watchful, for your adversary the devil prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. I don't know, do you guys see a promise here? We can cast all of our prayers, all of our worries through prayer to him. You know the lion that maybe some of you will see later on the 3D magic eye thing? We don't need to fear that lion because our lion, Jesus, the lion of the tribe of Judah, is greater than Satan. You know, have any of you seen the Lion King ever? All right, so think of like Jesus would be like Mufasa or Simba, right? And Satan is like Scar. He's got no chance. He's a loser in this story. All right? They might both be lions in a way, but God is the winner. God is wanting to take us to the point where we don't fear anything. If we trust in his word, if we have his words in our sights, then we don't need to fear anything that Satan throws at us. Even in the hard times, what's a Bible promise that can help us? All right? When we're really struggling, maybe someone in our family is going through a sickness and that upsets us. Philippians chapter 4, right? Philippians chapter 4 tells us we can still rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice, even when it doesn't make sense. That's what the following verses go on to say. Be not anxious about anything, but all things through prayer and supplications, let your request be made known to God with thanksgiving. And then even though it doesn't make sense when this person that I love is sick and you know, I'm scared for them. I, I'm worried for them. But God's peace, which goes beyond understanding, can come and guard our hearts and minds 
through Christ Jesus. This is what the word of God does. This is what God is wanting us to do. And this is why he's asking us to incline our ears to his word. Keep his word in our sights and really take it into our hearts. I have to ask you, what areas of your life right now is God wanting to speak to you in? What part of your sights is God saying, hey, this part of your life that you're worried about, you need to trust me and just keep walking with me. Hand it over to me. You're in my sights. God sees us at all times. Psalm 139. Where can we flee from God's presence? We can't. He sees us everywhere we go. He is everywhere we go. But are we choosing to acknowledge that he is right before us and that he is wanting to take us on the path as we walk in his ways? Prakash, like he said, in the law of God, in his love, love for God, love for man. Lorena and Eddie were talking to me about the importance of the Ten Commandments last week, how it's everything, and it is, because the Ten Commandments come down to love. God's wanting us to walk in that love. He keeps us in our sights. Are we keeping God and his word in our sights? Friends, that's my challenge for us, and I really hope that this week and always we can just really say, God, help me. Help me to keep your word in my sight. Everything I see, everywhere I go, everything I do, help me to not just, you know, all right, it's there, read, I read it. Let's take it into our ears. Ask God to help us see the world through the lens of the Bible. Let's ask him to help us go deeper and really put it in our hearts so that we can live the life that he wants us to live. Because without him, we have no hope. I'm going to finish in prayer, so let's bow our heads. Loving Heavenly Father, Lord, we want to thank you so much for your word. We want to thank you that you have not left us, Lord, without some form of righteousness here, Lord. We want to thank you that as your word tells us, you've given us the Holy Spirit, Lord, to convict us of righteousness, of judgment and of truth, Lord. And as we read your word, I just pray that you would bless us, that you would help us by giving us that desire to really dig deep into your word, Lord, that you would help us to really study, Lord, your truth, that we may not be these people, Lord, who are tossed around by every wind of doctrine, but you, you would help us, Lord, to just go deep into your word, that we may walk the path with you, that you may grow our lives to be more and more blessed as we walk with you by faith and not by sight, Lord. Help us to trust in you at all times, Help us to make time to study your word more deeply. Encourage us when we're meeting together to speak up as a church family that we may, even now in Sabbath school, just be blessed by your words as we speak to one another. We pray this, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen.